Hey everybody, this is Eddie Ember coming at you with another episode of You Don't Know Jack and it's the final countdown. Eight more episodes until this series is, my longest running series is finished. In the last episode we did high end leather toilet paper and today we're going to be doing someone's assorted pills because I'm still doing post commentary over these videos. Oh boy. Great. Fortunately, okay, this is the last episode. Can we get a monster check, please? Can we fade to black? Vader is still Luke's father. Okay, so I don't remember. I Hi, looked I'm through these episodes this time and before I actually. this is what I sound like when I do my baby bear voice. No, that's your Billy O'Brien impression, but let's just get you past that. That's how I like it. And today's wrong answer of the game is being brought to you by Dr. Lenny's Assorted Dr. Pills. Lenny's assorted some pills. of these pills have to do something you need, right? Try to choose the wrong answer brought to you by our sponsor to get prizes and cash. You know, I don't even try. All right, let's make history. I, I just choose them because I'm an idiot. A lucky right off idiot. The top, I tried returning this album, but I only uh, got uh, a dime There, I said back. it. If Chad Kroger of Nickelback sang a song about a nickel's back, what song would it be? Shaking hands with the Lincoln Memorial. You see, I live in, again, Canada, Bell, and on the back of, of our Monticello nickels, we have a beaver. From the White House. So, I really did not know this answer. Just because you're a huge Nickelback fan doesn't mean you should protest by getting this question wrong on purpose. <laughs> this would have worked. With few exceptions, Thomas Jefferson's home, Monticello, is on the flip side of the nickel. By the way, I didn't know there is a beaver Nickelback song because I don't have a favorite Nickelback song. Here's one for you. Mount Doom? I hardly know Doom. Which character from the Lord of the Rings films would probably get the most benefit out of some visine? Oh Sauron, Frodo, I'm gonna get Gandalf, some hate mail Gelman. here. I'm gonna get some real hate mail. Sometimes the littlest of creatures can achieve the greatest things, which makes it all the more embarrassing how much you messed this one up. Ah! Here's what you meant to pick. Sauron is I chose seen as him the because he was an eyesore. In the Rings movies, so some visine might help him get the red out. Or maybe Sauron should consider moving. I mean, all of Mordor seems pretty dirty and polluted. If he moved to, say, the Shire, I bet his allergies would clear right up. He should also avoid the Lonely Mountain because of smog. That last joke was for you Hobbit super nerds. Boom! <laughs> up next, putting the gel in Evangelical. So, you know these big mega churches with the rockin' blue jeans wearing tattoo having preacher dudes that run them? There's one in my neighborhood that's always showing free screenings of these hip action packed religious movies. So, I was wondering if these mega churches lived up to their name, what would I see if I attended one of their free religious movie screenings? 100 people viewing Moses with two tablet PCs of laws? 100,000 believers witnessing God tase the infant? One right answer coming up. The prefix mega means one million, so a mega church would be packed to the hilt with a million mega churchgoers. My favorite part of that film is when Noah says, I've had it with all these male and female motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. There'll be more than that watching Moses and his tablets. And there'll be a lot more than two tablets for you because you've won. Assorted Pills from Dr. Lenny's Assorted Pills. Dr. Lenny says pills are medicine and medicine is good for you. Dr. Lenny's pills are medicine and may or may not be good for you. Today's wrong answer of the game is worth a tidy 4,000 bucks. There you go. And now, reading Rain Doe. Hey, everybody. I haven't seen you in a while, Billy. That's because I was sick and dead with a little dog. A little bug? Was it a virus? No, a termite. One's made of skin, one's made of wood, so who's the dummy? Not me. While I was 
sick. I started writing my memoir. Well, what's your memoir going to be about? You don't know what a memoir is, do you, Dunny? Very funny, Billy. You know, I bet you couldn't even name a memoir. I know a million of them, I think. Maybe just one. Help me refresh my nunnery. Which of these ducks is a nunnoir? The five teeth you need in heaven? For whom the del toes, tush, or Tuesdays with Nori? Yes, Tuesdays with Maury was Mitch Albom's memoir about reconnecting with his old teacher, Maury Schwartz. <laughs> Is your memoir going to be about our friendship, Billy? Yeah, it'll be called Monday through Sunday with a blockhead. Where's the bomb, girl? Rock my world, girl. Ooh, yeah. And on its way. Now take off your shoe and finish him. And yep, it's a this or that. I'm going to read off seven things, and for each one, tell me if it's a medieval weapon, a woman's shoe, or both. If it's a weapon, press one. If it's a shoe, press the number two. And if you think it's both, press the number three. Each one right gets you 300. Each one wrong costs you 300. And don't forget the timer. Answer quickly for more bonus cash to spend on shoes. Okay, we're off. Swing back. Stiletto. Bump. Morningstar. Aspadrill. Annalise. Mancatcher. You don't like medieval weapons, and you don't like women's shoes. What exactly are you into? I'm still trying to develop my idea for shoes with weapons built into them. These shoes may seem normal, but when I pull on the tongue... Oh, whoops. Holy crap, I just killed somebody. Oh, <laughs> oh that scared me. It's just an intern. That'll wrap up round one. And you're sitting pretty for someone so ugly. Remember, I'm doubling the value of each question in round two. Let's move on, shall we? Next. Check, 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 please. Hey, Cookie. Uh, we're having some issues with your mic. Could you do a mic check but talk at exactly five decibels? Uh, sure, yeah. I... I, I could do that because I'm a professional and I totally know what that is. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it right now. Which of these is closest to five decibels? Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Or five decibels is practically inaudible. Thanks, Cookie. We thought there might be something wrong with the sound system, but we figured out that that's just the way your voice sounds. You know? So thanks. Why do I put up with this? Question seven. How about Sky Mall? Which of the following is an example of a musician flying into an airport with the same name? The singer of Leaving on a Jet Plane flying into Chicago? The singer of Paper Planes flying into Miami? The singer of Fly Like an Eagle flying into Boston? Or the singer of In the Aeroplane Over the Sea flying into Seattle? Oh man, where's a barf bag when you need one? <laughs> it's so obvious. That would be MIA flying into MIA, the Miami International Airport. MIA might have trouble getting through airport security, though, because according to her song, all she wants to do is... Walking chicken, taking out a mate. Guess I'll marry eight. Why not try... Stop gleeking. I've got a bone to pick with this TV show, Glee. Sure, it's fun and all, but the group on the show is not a Glee club. As a proud former member of the Liberty Benton High School Glee club, I know that you have to sing a Glee to be a Glee club, and I've never seen them sing one Glee. What should Glee change its name to if it wanted to stop lying about what kind of student organization it was depicting? Barbershop, acapella, show choir, or madrigal? The group on Glee isn't strictly speaking a Glee club, but it is a show choir. 
Also, no one in the Liberty Benton High School Glee Club was nearly as attractive as the people on Glee. In fact, no one in Liberty Benton was particularly attractive at all. Coming up, is this movie ever going to end? It's the put the choices into order then buzz in and see if you are right. I know, I know, these can be hard. That's why I'm adding a thousand bucks. Okay, arrange these perpetual films in order of length, longest to shortest. The never-ending story, Nick and Nora's infinite playlist, eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Infinite, eternal, never-ending, eternal, never-ending, infinite, eternal, infinite, never-ending, or never-ending, infinite, eternal. <laughs> Why do I have the feeling you've never watched anything longer than an episode of Dora the Explorer? I so wanted you to pick this one. Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist runs exactly 90 minutes and Eternal Sunshine runs 108. Both the original and international versions of the never-ending story fall in between at 102 and 94 minutes. But ironically, none of them seem as long as anything starring Martin Short. Hold me, never let me go. Coming up next, No Man's Land. You seen those commercials with the Travelocity roaming gnome? He always seems to be getting abused. He's plunged over a cliff, fallen over a waterfall, been put in a piranha tank, impaled himself in a ceiling, gotten electrocuted by some stadium lights, but somehow he always survives. And I bet he's starting to wonder if he's invincible, like Bruce Willis in Unbreakable, or Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. Suppose the Travelocity roaming gnome decides to test his invincibility. If he leaps off a building in the world's number one country for tourist vacations, what will he do? Jump off the Leaning Tower of Pisa, dive off of Big Ben, tumble off of the Empire State Building, or plummet off the Eiffel Tower? I said Travelocity Gnome, not King Kong, nor that penny I once dropped from the top. <laughs> I think I killed a man. <laughs> Watch how easy this is. Year after year after year, the number one country for tourist vacations by far is France. Not even close. And if you jump off the Eiffel Tower, the appropriate expression to yell in French is "Wee!" <laughs> Brace yourself for the attack. When you see two clues that match, press one. Four thousand if you're right, but if you're wrong, you lose four thousand. And of course, remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Where does she grow? Where do these characters bloom? Good luck.
That's all she wrote! Your score is not the worst. That's all I have to say about it. Kind of like when people ask if you're good looking and the response is always about your great personality. Because you look like a butt, no one wants to say that. The score is the equivalent of looking like a butt, but having a great personality. There, I said it. You don't know Jack! Good job, everyone. Donnie, what are we doing? So, are you thinking you'd like to enrage in more Tom Flummery? Hey everybody, this is Mike Builder, General Manager of Jellyvision Games, the makers of You Don't Know Jack. We're hard at work here on the floor of the Jellyvision Game Design Workshop, coming up with great games that you'll be playing in the years to come. So keep your eyes peeled for some of our upcoming products, like Angry Yoga, Vampires vs. Show Dogs, Wacky Oki, What's That Smell, Newscaster, Tax Preparation 3D, Space Farts, Enough About You, and Tween Fighter. We're also working on lots of casual games that are fun for the whole family. Puppy Bucket, Everybody Help Grandma, Jarts, Awkward Confessions, and so much more. So if you love fun and fart noises, clear some room on your game shelf for the Jellyvision games of the future. Poor Alice, stuck at home doing chores. Housework sure can be tiring, huh, Alice? But robot maids today can be so expensive. Well, why not try a reformed evil robot from the reformed robot house cleaning company? Oh, sure, these robots used to be programmed to wipe out the human race, but now they're programmed to wipe out ground.